Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be discussing the history and mystery regarding the Teapot of Tyron, one of Ninjago's most rare and sought-after relics, and it's arguably the relic with the most amount of questions surrounding it. So in terms of the actual Teapot of Tyron, or Teapot of Tyran, if you want to pronounce it that way, we actually have a new updated history regarding where the Teapot came from. And that is, of course, thanks to a new Ninjago story currently being written online from Tommy Andreessen, one of the actual co-creators of the entire Ninjago series, and The Marvelous Jan, a fellow Ninjago YouTuber and commentator who I actually consider to be a very good friend of mine. So it's kind of cool seeing him actually work on this story. But like I said, the story itself is going to be called The Splinter in the Blind Man's Eye, and it's currently releasing a chapter every single week. As of the time of recording this video, we only have two chapters out, but by the time this video goes up, there will probably probably be three chapters out, so just keep that in mind. Now, like I said, the splinter in the blind man's eye is considered to be a maybe canon storyline, meaning that it could be applicable to the actual Ninjago story, but it also could not be. The events of that story could very well make sense in the context of modern day Ninjago, but they could also very much as well be in its own little pocket universe that doesn't actually affect the main Ninjago timeline. So do keep that in mind as we continue onwards. But yeah, chapter two of this actual storyline goes on to describe a little bit of the history regarding the Teapot of Tyron and its specific origins, how it came to be and who actually created it. And believe it or not, the story itself actually suggests that the first Spinjitzu master himself created the Teapot at the Golden Peaks, which is a lot to unpack right away. First of all, the Teapot being created by the first Spinjitzu master, I could see that working out. Due to the Teapot itself being a very mystical and magical artifact, but also at the Golden Peaks, very similar to that of the Golden Weapons, which is actually quite peculiar. In case you guys are not familiar with the origins of the Golden Weapons, they were created at the Temple of Light, actually crafted and physically welded there, while the materials themselves were actually from the Golden Peaks, so you can kind of see where the correlation is between these two artifacts, the Golden Weapons and the Teapot of Tyron, both being created in a similar style by the same person. But as I said, this could very well not be canon, but for the purposes of this video here, let's just assume that the events of the splinter in the blind man's eye are actually canon to the main Ninjago timeline. So in terms of the actual, I guess, creation and conception of the teapot, what was the purpose of the first Spinjitzu master creating the teapot of Tyron? Why did he do it? Well, for starters, I think it's pretty obvious. At the time of Ninjago's creation, other realms in the inner circle had already begun production and begun to prosper in their own way. And as such, the first Spinjitzu master may have sensed growing threats coming from very specific realms. I'm talking about Jinjago. Again, it's not super clear which realms came first or what the order of the realms being created were, but if the first Spinjitzu master sensed threats coming from Jinjago, specifically the Jin, it would make sense that he would actually make a relic that could be of some type of help to him and Ninjago. He would create an artifact useful for not only protecting Ninjago, but also capturing the Jin themselves, actually sealing off the threat from the rest of his realm. So in my opinion, the teapot was initially created as a precaution, but the teapot also does more than just hold Jin. As we saw in the Ninjago TV series, the Teapot of Tyron is also capable of housing other people as well, other living beings, not just Jin. so keep that in mind as well. It could very well have been used as a precaution for threats coming from every other realm, even Ninjago itself. In terms of how the rest of the story went following this new and improved history regarding the Teapot, we've seen it all before. Somehow, Captain Soto of the Destiny's Bounty got a hold of it and managed to use it against Nauticon himself during the war between the Destiny's Bounty and the Misfortune's Keep. Soto was successfully able to capture Nauticon within the teapot, but unfortunately for Captain Soto's crew, the Destiny's Bounty was soon wrecked at sea, and the teapot was probably washed ashore somewhere in Ninjago. The most likely place, in my opinion, would be that of Styx City, hence why it was there during the events of Ninjago Skybound. Speaking of Skybound, it was then established that Klaus himself knew of the teapot and went hunting for it in between Season 5 and Season 6. Following the battle between the ninja and the preeminent that pretty much destroyed the city of Styx, Klaus was able to uncover the actual teapot itself and as such released Nauticon upon the world. The entire rest of Skybound season took place, Nauticon eventually stopped using the teapot to actually contain and house this collection of people, instead opting to transfer their souls into the Jin Blade, otherwise known as the Sword of Souls. Several ninja and other main characters were actually trapped inside the Sword of Souls for the longest time until the events of Skybound were erased and as such the teapot 
itself was never actually found. It remained in the wreckage of the City of Styx for a long time, unfound by Klaus and unfound by anybody, until now, which is where the big mystery comes into play. So regarding the actual history of the Teapot of Tyran, I think the updated history of this artifact is very understandable and very well crafted. It has been in a lot of different places over the course of Ninjago's run, and obviously in the modern day, it still has no signs of stepping away. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, the future of the Teapot of Tyran has been very much questioned by the Ninjago community. The Teapot itself has been appearing in the recent Ninjago TV series at an alarming rate. Ever since Season 11 came out, otherwise known as Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu, the Teapot of Tyran has appeared in every single season, either in the background or being showcased by a main character, that of course being Clutch Powers himself. I feel like every season has showcased this Teapot except for the island, though I could be wrong about that. Feel free to let me know in the comments if it did actually appear in the island or not. But what does this mean? If the Teapot of Tyran keeps appearing in the background during every single Ninjago season starting with season 11, what exactly is coming? Is something big on the horizon? In my opinion, I think so. This has certainly gotten people talking, and perhaps this could indeed be crossed over into this new Vengestone Buyer arc that is rumored to come out next year for Ninjago 2022. With the teapot appearing over and over again, it does seem pretty much apparent that Nauticon himself will return at some point. Perhaps the teapot constantly appearing is just to remind the audience that Nauticon is still out there and his return is probably going to happen very soon. A very popular Ninjago theory right now is that Nauticon himself is the Vengestone buyer, and this is also a theory that we've talked about on the channel over and over again. But in terms of the actual theory, it does make sense. The theory goes that Clutch Powers is actually Nauticon in disguise after one of the teapot appearances that of course being the one in Prime Empire actually led to the teapot being activated and Clutch Powers was the one to do so. The theory goes that Clutch Powers has been Nauticon in disguise ever since Prime Empire came out and he has been secretly been working as the Vengestone buyer in the background of this whole entire time. I feel like that could very well make sense and I feel like that would be a very very good move by Ninjago if they decided to make this a legitimate thing. If Nauticon has been secretly lurking in the background this whole time that would actually be really cool and really well done. However, is this going to happen? I hesitate to say so. The Teapot of Tyran appearing in the background over and over again ever since Season 11 seems to me like a long-running gag or easter egg, but it's been showing up constantly. There are indeed other artifacts that could very well be showing up in the background or have been used for cameo or background easter eggs. For example, the Sword of Sanctuary and other pieces of Ninjago history could very well be appearing in the background over and over again, but instead we keep on getting the Teapot of Tyran. It's been consistent ever since Season 11, which like I said, is either a very clever easter egg by somebody who works on the show or this is actually suggesting Nauticon's impending return. If Nauticon does indeed return, like I mentioned in previous videos, he's probably not going to be happy. He very much remembers the events of Skybound much like Jay and Nia do, and since Nia is kind of off the table right now following her sacrifice during Seabound, it seems to me like this would be the perfect time for Nauticon to return and exact his revenge on Jay. You would think that he would want to exact his revenge on Nia as well, but I feel like Jay would be as primary target. And with Jay probably going to be in a very vulnerable state following Nia's departure, who knows, maybe Nauticon could indeed return. I feel like if the teapot is just a simple easter egg over and over again that we keep on seeing, then I feel as though that's kind of repetitive and in a way kind of misleading to an extent. I mean, with the teapot of Tyron constantly making appearances, you would think that it would have some importance or some significance to the actual future of the Ninjago series. And if not, it would just seem like a really awkward thing. As I said earlier, why would you constantly keep pushing the same easter egg over and over again. Either there's somebody working on Ninjago right now who is very much obsessed with the Teapot of Tyran as an artifact, or Nauticon's going to be returning in the future. Who's to say? I feel as though even just promoting the idea of the Teapot is kind of intriguing to say the least. Maybe Ninjago has something more planned for the Teapot of Tyran. Maybe Ninjago is planning on bringing Nauticon back. Either way, I feel like the Teapot itself will be making more appearances in the future, and I'm really glad that we got some more history established for this actual Ninjago artifact. So with that being said, you guys, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today. I was very excited to talk about the new updated history surrounding the Teapot of Tyron itself, and hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing about that. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about the future of the Teapot, though. Do you feel like it will be returning in the future, or what do you think the constant background appearances are suggesting? Leave all your thoughts down below in the comments, you guys, and like I said, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description from other forms of social media. As as always, big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again the Marvelous Chan. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video once again. My name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell. Mm -hmm.